Johnny, if you will, uh, tell us who tonight, who's tonight's uh, isolated player of the game. Well, Mike, we've selected Alfonso Torres to be our isolated player of the game. He, that young man has been doing a very good job with the kickoffs and, and also the <clears throat> the PATs, and he made a long field goal a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, <clears throat> he can be a game breaker, especially when it's a tight football game like it will be tonight when this defensive struggle game comes down to it. If we get it down in the inside the 20 or near the 20 and it's a uh, long yardage, Coach Fogelman will not be afraid to send that young man out there and kick a field book goal because he's got confidence in him. You know, and, and, and Johnny, you make a great point. And, and, and we remember last year, we really, when Torres got hurt, when he broke his uh, broke his ankle or his leg or what, you could really, there was lots of opportunities, a lot of close ball games that we weren't able to win for, for the simple reason of a missed uh, extra point, a missed extra point. Then you have to go for, go for two. And we just haven't had that problem. We're, uh, we're approaching kickoff here guys yes the teams are out on the field and before we mention Alfonso Torres set to kick for the Lampers I apologize didn't see who won the toss but the Lampers will be kicking off to DeQueen and I'm going to try to avoid saying the Leopards a lot because this is Leopards versus Leopards kick will be fielded at the five yard line across the 10 the 15 yard line trying to get to the outside now trying to cut back against the grain and the Leopards make the stop at the 15 yard line on the return was Brandon Keener Keener didn't have any excuse me I'm sorry how to work with Keener I, that's uh, Matt uh, Jay Cullen. Yeah, I was. I had a number three. Uh, yeah, well, that was Kevin Murdoch on the on the stop down yeah. there on the coverage. But Malvin did a great job getting downfield and slowing down the pursuit of the Queen and uh, trying to reverse his field. And before you know it, a host of leopards, including Murdoch, brings him down there at the 15-yard line. And stepping <laughs> under center looks to be number seven, Jamario Irvin. Trying to get to the outside, Leopards are going to halt him at the line of scrimmage, wow. maybe for a slight loss on the play. Well, that's number 73 for the Mallory Leopards. That's Eric Watson. He slices inside and, and brings down the quarterback immediately. Quarterback was going to try to run the option to the outside. Slow developing play and a loss of about a yard, yard and a half. The Leopards will actually be going up against one of the top running backs in the state. Uh, number 20 is Greg White. He's a 6'2", 220-pound senior that has signed and, and will play at the University of Missouri next year. Once again, coming back to the line of is now trying to get to the outside. Leopards with good pursuit going to make the stop at about the 17-yard line. And that will bring up third down for the Queen. Yeah, in this direction, come back across the grain, and Kevin Bell steps up and makes a stop, but not before a game of about three. Leopards have really done a good, good job here. This is the first year we got them third and long by third and long. And third for a running team like the Queen, third and, and eight and a half or whatever, that is really third and long for them, isn't it, Mike? Absolutely. Third down and eight, Jamario Irvin, again under center. One man split to the far side for DeQueen. Irvin on the keeper, now looking to throw. Over the middle, pass is incomplete, almost picked off by James King. A late flag comes in, and it may be interference against the Leopards. Yeah, the I'm afraid so. Yeah. King bumped him before the, while the ball was in the air. He, he felt like he was going to get up there and get the ball, but instead comes up and bumps him in the back, and it's going to be against Malvern. They'd slipped Greg White out of the backfield on a delay, and there was Malvern Leopards all over the quarterback. They were all over uh, Jamal Irwin, but uh, unfortunately... Uh, James was trying to make it play, and, and uh, he did bump him, like Johnny said, while the, the uh, ball was in there. They're going to call that interference, and that's an automatic first and ten. Here, again, if you're just joining, this game just underway, 10.32 to go in the first quarter, and the Queen has the football. Penalty will move the ball up to the 32-yard line of the Queen. It'll be first down and ten. Unfortunately, Malvern had good coverage. Poor pass by the quarterback from the Queen, and it was just throwing it up for grabs. Unfortunately, Malvern <clears throat> had the penalty. Irvin again steps under center. Two wing backs on either end of the line. Sends one man in motion. Irvin turns, gives to his big back, and he'll get up to about just shy of the 34-yard uh, line on the carry was the aforementioned Greg White. Guys, that was just a deep handoff, and he goes off the right-hand side, and Malvern is just stacking nine men in the box and stopped him for a short gain of maybe three. Uh, as Mike mentioned, ball is placed near the 34-yard line of the DeQueen Leopards. 
Yeah, they keep probing that left side. I tell you what, oh, Eric Watkins just hanging in there, number 73, and just really doing a good job along, you know, along with his uh, with his other guys. One man split to the near side, Irvin up under center, offset, or actually just an eye formation along with the wing back there. Irvin looking for room along the line of scrimmage, squirts through the hole, and he'll be dropped at about the 39-yard line. He'll bring up third down once again. This time it'll be third down and three. Guys, number 74, which I th believe that's Grady Allison in there with 74 on the shirt, and um, <clears throat> comes up and, and makes a stop. He's dragging him, but uh, the quarterback takes the keeper on the right right hand side, and falls in the hole, and then uh, gains about five yards on the play near the 40 yard line. You know, the quarterback from DeQueen is uh, one of the top sprinters in in the state, so we need to keep an eye on him because if he gets away, he could be gone. Irvin again under center, high formation, turn, give, in the backfield is White, but he escapes and will have the first down, gets up over the 45-yard line, and it looked like Ron the Lepers had him hemmed up in the backfield. Yeah, White just shows you, he, he did a little slow down, then speed up, and he showed you that burst of speed, and, and, and he just showed right there why he's a D1 uh, running back, Johnny. He just, uh, he, he, let, he didn't get in a hurry, uh, bounced outside, and, and really used his blockers well. He definitely broke down containment on this on the left hand side in front of the home stands and uh, like you say, he slowed him down and then he just sped up real fast and got to the corner and, and, and broke containment. Eight forty seven to go here in the first quarter. The Queen on the opening drive, still no score. As Irvin steps under center, again sends White in motion to give this to White on the right side of the line and he'll pound his way up forward for about three yards. Gets up to uh, about the 47 yard line, Devon Ball on the tackle, and uh, once again they're they're bringing the running back across around the side to to the right hand yeah. side of the line, and then he's going up following his blockers that are pulling inside the hole. Great point, Johnny, because they're running running white out here to slot slot to the left, and and then he's got a pretty good head of steam when he comes around that corner and tries to hit that hole. One man split to the near side. For DeQueen. Irvin up under center. Turns, gives to his fullback, breaks away from a tackle. He'll be stopped in Leopard territory at the 47 yard line. Will be about a yard and a half shy of the first. It'll bring, bring up third and short for DeQueen. Nobody is expecting the fullback to get the ball this time, and then he breaks through the line and the linebacker, past the linebackers. And as he's turning around, James King brings him to the turf near the 47. But it brings up a very short third down and two. Yeah, Sam Willis, the uh, junior fullback, 180-pounder, he shot through there pretty quick. Irvin turns, gives to man coming across, and that is the other running back forward to Queen, Corey Morgan. And Morgan gets the first down as he gets up to the 36, 37-yard line of Malvern. Yeah, nobody is there, and the quickness of Mario Jamerson has to track him down, and he gains a approximately about 9 to 10 yards on that carry. Well, I tell you what, and I, I don't know whether it's number 72 or number 50. One of the linemen got out there. They pulled the guard, number 50, out there, and I don't want to, but they absolutely sealed that play off and sealed our defensive, had our, our linebacker tied up. Irvin turns, gives to his fullback once again, and he'll be, well, I take that back. That is Irvin. Irvin on the carry. They had me full and several of the Leopards as well. Gain down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Pick up a four. Yeah, the quarterback's deception, giving it inside, and then he pulls it out and rides him into the hole, and then he takes it out. And, and then several Leopards, uh, Grady Olson was on his back, as well as Kevin Bell and uh, Osha Johnson in there trying to pull him down, not before he gains a, a long four near five yards on the play. You know, Johnny, uh, Kevin Bell had him had a hold of him in the back, really back about the line of scrimmage, but uh, he still got that cast on his hand and just couldn't quite uh, get a good grip on him. White dotting the eye for DeQueen. He'll get the pitch near side, squirts through the hole, and then is dropped at about the 31-yard line, gain of a couple on the play, and once again, third down. Watkins uh, turns him around, and then Kevin Bell blows him up. <laughs> he gained a short gain of maybe one, one and a half. Bell just, just splattered him. You know, and, you know, Greg White, he's 6'2", 220, and Kevin Bell just unloaded him. 6.07 to go here in the first quarter. Again, DeQueen on the opening drive of the game. 
Guys, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, this no huddle spread offense. This is offensive. Dequeen is the complete antithesis of what we've You're seen exactly. for the most part this year. You're exactly right. Whatever that big word means. Irvin up under center, like there may have been some motion. No, Greg White has the carry. He'll have the first down as he bursts down to inside the 20 yard line. Guys, I thought I saw some motion in the backfield, but uh, apparently was not early. Evidently, uh, big play, big play by the Queen on that one, and, and one again, once again, uh, uh, number twenty, their big back uh, got a big, big gain right there, Johnny. Yeah, they they ran the option to the outside, and, and as soon as he hit the corner, he just can he he's no match for any of the secondary, and he just blows through the secondary and gains another six, seven, eight yards on the secondary. Malmer's going to have to bow up and slow him down because they're inside their twenty. Yeah, he's easily got 50 pounds on anybody in the Malvin secondary. If he gets there, he's going to do some damage. This time, give man around the end. And once again, now the Leopards make a stop back at the 22-yard line. Corey Morgan on the carry. Cortez Tony, as well as a host of a couple of Leopards, coming there and makes the stop behind the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a loss of about five. They were trying to give a misdirection and give a, uh, a back coming around the outside towards the home stands. And it's a loss. Big, good read by the Malvern Leopards. Well, <coughs> big number 74. Uh, Grady Allison's wearing 74 tonight, and he had that one stopped. And with his speed, he could get outside and get a hold of the, of the, of the speedy back. And uh, uh, he was right there, you know, right in the middle of that four-yard loss. We've got... Uh, 4.30 to go in the first quarter. Again, the Queen on the opening drive. They're going to take a timeout. When we come back, it'll be sick. second and 15 for the Queen. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season from our Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings. 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25 we offer Awanas free of charge and on Wednesday nights at 6 we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Back once again at the Queen where the Malvern Lepers are taking on the Queen Lepers. 4.31 to go here in the first quarter and guys uh, if if the rest of the game goes anything like this, we're going to be we're going to be out of here fairly early tonight. Yeah, it's uh, there was one one pass, I believe one pass play, and it was a big third down play. It was third and eight, and the Leopards uh, got called on a pass defense, and that's what's kept this drive alive. Otherwise, uh, the Leopards maybe should be driving the other direction. But uh, uh, big second down there, big stop, big loss for the, Le the Leopards. Irvin up under center brings a man in motion. Now looking to throw. Throws left side and overshoots his man. And he, so it will be third down and 15 for the Queen. Mike, he felt the presence of Watkins in the backfield and had to get rid of it. Overshoots his target. He had a target going out 10 yards and, and out uh, to the sidelines and overshoots his, defend, his, his receiver by a good five yards over his head. And, and Malvern had it well well covered with uh, also Brian and, and King in the, in the backfield. Uh, attempting to break up the play. Yeah, third and long, the Leopards want, they really want DeQueen to throw the ball because uh, we match up a whole lot better with them that way. Wide line up at the left, up back. Irvin on, looking to throw, looking for the corner, and Malvern Leopard is there, but a great catch. Great wow. catch in the end zone, and DeQueen gets on the scoreboard first with 4.18 to go in the first quarter. Yeah. Guys, unfortunately, it was thrown over the top of uh, <clears throat> Kevin Murdoch, and, and Murdoch had a great position in front of him, but the ball was well over his head, and the receiver jumps up and dives back over his head and catches the football for a touchdown. Well, that's where, you know, he was up against Grant Dooley, a wide uh, a wide receiver, a six foot two wide receiver, 12th grader, and he threw the ball up there where only the big 6'2 Dooley could catch it. Great, great throw by the, by the, uh, the quarterback. The kick is up. And we've got a flag down, so that, that play, I guess, never happened. But nonetheless, right now, the Queen leading Malvern 6 to nothing. It looks like they're going to scoot the Queen. When I say they're going to scoot the Queen back, they're actually talking to the Queen. They called offside on Malvern. 
So the queen will be a little bit closer to the goal line and might make their decision somewhat interesting here with the big backs that they have. Well, you know, that's a tough situation for the queen. They get a, a they don't they don't have any opportunity, and, and he had made the, the extra point. So well, since it was a dead ball, I mean, they have to kick it again. Yeah. So. yeah. So once again, the queen sets up for the kick. Good snap, good hold. The kick is away, and it is good, but not by not much. By much. <laughs> 4.18 to go here in the first quarter. When we come back, the Lepers will have their opening possession. This is Malvern Leopard Football. Enjoy your life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. We've got the strength to help you build a solid financial future. We're Malvern National Bank. Once again, back at DeQueen, where the DeQueen Leopards have taken a seven to nothing lead on Malvern. Malvern will get its first possession shortly as uh, DeQueen has chewed up the majority of the first quarter on that opening drive. And the band has arrived. They, I believe they, were, they took a wrong turn somewhere, but they're here now. The kick is away, angled towards the sideline, and King's going to let this go out of bounds. The flags come up, and the Lepers will get the ball to the 35 if they so choose. Well, they got the work cut out for them now, Johnny, because uh, the Leopards need to go ahead and answer here because uh, uh, the Queen took uh, all, 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 what, two-thirds of the uh, first quarter out of the way. Yeah, they took almost eight minutes on, off the clock, but I think Malvern's going to make them kick again. Mm -hmm. We've got our threat and our, our greatest athletes out there on the field right now, and uh, we're wanting them to kick it to us. Oh, yeah. 22-26 or four can t take it all the way back. Raul Martinez is the kicker for DeQueen, and he does have a good leg. That ball... Uh, had it not gone out of bounds, would have been down around the, the four or five yard line. Not a big, not a big guy, but he can kick it. Yeah, got a good leg. Remind you to thank our friends at Southern Link here on Channel 13. You can watch the replay of tomorrow's ball, uh, tonight's ball game tomorrow at four o'clock, right here on Channel 13, where you're here in Malvern Leopard Football live from the Queen. So Martinez has it teed up once again. The deep man. Of course, Dontale Henson, King and Bryant back there as well. This one angled towards the far sideline. Bryant catches it at the 25, and the oh. Leopards are going to lose 10 yards. Bryant uh, looks like Mario James. Oh, that is James. And normally it's Bryant lined up across the way. James, he went down to catch the ball, and uh, evidently that it looked real close from here, but evidently that knee touched the ground when he went down. Guys, I think that happened last week. He was he caught a punt, a pass, or, or or something, a kickoff. It was just the same, and, and and he put his knee down to, to catch it, and uh, they spotted it right there. Still, they get the ball to the 25-yard line. And once again, this is the opening drive for the Leopards. They send trips right, twins left, right out of the gate. James King in at quarterback for Malvern. Face to throw. Now going to try to keep it. Goes up the middle, and he is only going to get a yard, maybe two. As uh, DeQueen had that well defended, but a different look run, uh, right out of the gate for Malvern. Yeah, that's kind of what we ex expected. You know, Johnny, we all talked about it. Uh, Johnny said, you know, shake things up, change things up a little bit. We saw quite a bit. We saw, I don't know, some of this last week, and it was pretty successful. So we kind of expect to see more of James King back there in the quarterback spot. Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. Once again, it is King. He's got Henson in the backfield alongside him. Twins to either side. And it is second and nine for Mauer. Man in motion. Fakes to give. Now gives to Henson. Henson across the 30-yard line. A good play in misdirection going both ways. Fake to Llewellyn coming to the home side in motion and then turns around and hands it <clears throat> to the second man through. And that's Henson going off the left-hand side of, behind the tackle and gains five yards on the carry. Well, what, what Fogelman and, and Coach Baker and the offensive coaches are showing uh, DeQueen something they really haven't seen that match of, and that's number four back there with a threat to run. Trips right, uh, twins left, King again, alone in the backfield, sets up in shotgun. 
258 to go in the first quarter. The Queen leading seven to nothing. King on the carry up the middle. He's got the first down. He's across the 40 to 45 yard line, and the Leopards will keep this drive alive with a big gain from James King. Yeah, the quarterback draw looks like the the line, and they got bigger splits. So you just spread out the football field, and you watch where that middle linebacker goes, and then King reads him, and then he goes off the side where he's not, and then he just vacates that hole and gains a good 10 yards on the play. Great point, Johnny. James King just sat back there and let the play open, then took advantage of it. Twins to either side. Henson alongside James Wright. The give is to Henson off the left side, and he'll pick up a yard on the play to bring up second down and nine. That's a tough yard because once again, you, you, you fake it to Llewellyn coming across and then give it to Henson coming back through, and they read it well <clears throat> for a very short gain on the play. Looks like uh, the Leopards from DeQueen are playing <laughs> quite a few guys. They're, they're big guns both ways. Number 15, they caught the pass. Seven, their quarterback. Big number 20 is playing a uh, defensive end out there. So, And 22 is out there in the corner. Trips right, split left. Now King alone in the backfield brings Henson in motion. Thanks to give to King. Now I'm going to try to find room on the right side. He's at the 45-yard line, and he'll... Maybe get a half yard on the play to bring up third down and about eight for the Leopards. Yeah, that was a tough yard because he had <laughs> shake and bake two uh, defenders and he reaches out and gets that extra yard maybe. And uh, King had to do it all himself. Now <clears throat> it's going to have to bring out the passing game to get it downfield. I tell you what, Ron, looking at this this defense, uh, they look kind of big and bulky, but they uh, had no trouble tracking James down on that play. Yeah, big 82, the 6'2", 250 is a tight end defensive end. He's a good football player. King has Henson to his right, drops straight back, looking to throw. Right side, pass is picked off. Picked off at the 45-yard line. A David Trailer. Oh, excuse me, that was Trailer in at quarterback. And the Queen will take over just shy of their own 45-yard line. That was really a good play by the corner from, from uh, the Queen. Uh, the ball was really kind of thrown t down low where King was the only one that could catch it. And he had the first down yardage. But, boy, I, the corner for uh, the Queen just stepped right in under it and uh, made a big-time interception. 7 to nothing. the Queen leading Malvin, a minute 15 to go in the first quarter. One man split to, right, uh, to the right for the Queen. I formation. Give to the fullback. He'll pick up a couple, maybe three yards on the play. Guys, that was number 56, Mitchell Whitman, <clears throat> that's playing inside tackle and, and, and crashes down, and he had to get the fullback. He had no choice. He's the first man through, and it was his man, and he does. He makes a good, strong tackle right up front. Maybe a gain of two, maybe three. On the play, the ball is placed near the 47-yard line. Yeah, the Queen run big old number 5'11", 220-pound 11th grader. Uh, Yordy Morgan in there at fullback, and he's a load. One man again split to the right. White goes in motion. Irvin drops straight back, dumps a pass over the middle to his big tight end. He'll have the first down at the Malvern 40-yard line. And nothing uh, complicated about that. Drop straight back and get it to your big tight end. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a weapon that really the Leopards don't have. In in that it's the one thing that the Leopard offense really misses is that big tight end, Johnny. Yeah, it just gives you an extra wrinkle. It makes your linebacker stay home, and you've got to read that when they he blows off the line of scrimmage going downfield. You got to hang with him, and unfortunately, Malvin did not. Mitchell was a receiver there. He's 6'2", 250, big kid. Irvin on the keeper right side. Gets past the line of scrimmage. Flag comes down. And Irvin breaks away, and he is going to be finally run out of bounds down near the five. But this one's probably going to be coming back. That looks like a flag that uh, normally indicates holding. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking. Early on, we talked about this DeQueen football team. DeQueen was picked by a lot of people early on to win the 7A, uh, the 7-4A, the, the, the conference that we were in. And quite honestly, right now they're you know they're looking like the, that early early prediction, Johnny. They they've really looked it looked. And impressive here. Yeah, Malvern had an opportunity to stop them early in last drive, and now they've got the momentum with the interception and and a few plays, strong plays by clipping off 10, 12 yards of carry, and you, you you get the momentum on your side, and you usually get a good defense down really early in a football game. That's going to do it for the first quarter. The Leopards trail at this and Dequeen seven to nothing as the uh, the first quarter comes to an end. We'll be back.
after these messages. Thinking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Back once again at the Queen where the Leopards trail 7 to nothing. The Queen Leopards have the football on the their own 49-yard line. Or excuse me, the Malvern 49-yard line. And they will be facing... A first down and almost 20 yards. Malvin defense in good shape here if they can make a stop. Yeah, they had a great break with a, with a holding call when the quarterback uh, got out there in wide open territory. And James King had to run him out around the seven, but <clears throat> with for the Malvern fortune uh, was able to back the uh, the Queen Leopards back near midfield in the defense of the Leopards uh, have an opportunity to put make a stop here. The queen comes back out of and will step under center. One man split to his right. He turns, gives to the man coming across. Good pursuit there by the Leopards. But a good game nonetheless for Corey Morgan as Morgan has run out of bounds at the 41-yard line. <laughs> Once again, they break containment. As soon as he gets outside, he, he's, he, there's nobody there. They've ran off the secondary, and he gets almost 10 yards on the carry near the, the old first down marker near the 40-yard line. You know, Corey Morgan's one of the speedsters for, for the Queen and obviously has good speed, but my gosh, Grady Allison's the one that run him down and got him out, got him out, out knocked him out of bounds. Allison really moves well for a big man. Second down and just over 10 yards for DeQueen. They come back to the line of scrimmage. Irvin brings White in motion. Looking to throw is Irvin. Throwing along the right side. Only one man there is James King. And he overshoots even King by about 10 yards. So the pass goes incomplete. It'll be third down and 10. Guys, yeah, a quarterback just throws rainbows. And, and they're going to throw it up for grabs for a lot of people. Yeah. And it gives an opportunity for our good de defenders to come up with it as well. But uh, the, the type of passing that uh, attack that the DeQueen Leopards have is a finesse type fa passing game. It's not a force it in there type passing game. It's throwing it over the top and just laying it in there. It's easy touch by the quarterback, and unfortunately that's what happens. You overthrow your receiver most of the time. The Queen coming back to the line of scrimmage now. Four receivers set the Leopards. Malvin have, has not seen thus far. Irvin running the option near side. Now is cutting up field is Irvin. He's hit after a gain of about a yard on the play, maybe a yard and a half. They'll bring up fourth down for the Queen. Guys, the best thing about that play, the quarterback ran the option trying to get it outside to the corner, and three of the defensive linemen made the stop on the quarterback. Uh, Osha Johnson, Watkins, Mitchell, Whitman was all on the tackle and brings up a, long, a very short gain of maybe one. Ball's placed at the 40-yard line. Yeah, they spread the Leopards out and tried to run the option through the gap, and there wasn't a gap there. DeQueen in punting formation. Low snap, fielded cleanly. Punt will be fielded at the 9-yard line across the 15, and the tackle actually is actually made right at the 15-yard line. I return about about six on the on the return, and uh, Trent Bryant, I believe, received that in a uh, gain of six. <clears throat> Malvin will take over first and ten at their own 15. 10.52 to go here in the first half. The Queen leading Malvin, seven to nothing. Leverage now, guys, only on their second possession, and we're in the second quarter. That's true. Yeah. Leopards trailing this one seven to nothing with the ball and uh, trying to get something going. Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. Twins right, split left. Trailer is the quarterback. Rolls to his left under pressure. He'll be dropped back at the five-yard line. Guys, you've got to set up the play by good fakes, and, and Trailer didn't get the fake well, before he rolled out, and the defense just swarmed him near the seven-yard line and brings him down immediately as he turns around. Well, that's big old number 82, Mitchell Norris, Morris, excuse me, the 6'2", 250-pound tight end, uh, defensive end, uh, do-it-all football player. He, he is a dandy. Spot the ball at the six-yard line. It's second down and 19 for Malvert. 
trailer. Working, working out of shotgun, brings James King in motion. Gives to King, right side, looking for running room, hurdles a man. Now a flag comes in late wow. as the play ends. And this is going to come from the back judge, which is not a good sign for Malvern. Uh -huh. Actually, the, the referee, oh, the referee yeah. from way back in the back of the end zone. I don't know. It has to be a hold about where he's looking at. So, unfortunately, he's probably going to back Malvern up again. And that's going to be half the distance to the goal line. It's going to be around the four-yard line where the ball will be placed. Uh, they're not moving it, so they're going to decline the penalty and put Malvern in third and long. Yeah, it uh, must have been obvious for oh, oh, because I tell you what, that referee come in there and, and he threw the flag and, and uh, it had to be pretty obvious for him to pick it up that far away. Yeah, good, good decision by the the Queen coaches. Sure. You know, when you already have them pinned deep in their own territory plus a, a long uh, third down and fifteen, it's going to be tough to get that first down from here. Johnny said, third and 15 for Malvern. Trailer again sets up in shotgun. Two receivers to either side. Henson to his left. Takes a snap, drops straight back, looking to throw over the middle. Pass is incomplete. I think he was looking for King there. Yeah, he was trying to get King the ball coming across the middle. And uh, it fired it over his head, and now the punting team's coming out on the field. We were talking earlier, you know, uh, Johnny, or, or Michael One mentioned uh, Bryson uh, Barnes out there, number five, had, had done such a great job, the 10th grade wide receiver. He was out here running by himself in front of the uh, Nashville bench. Buchanan on the punt for Malvern. He has set up about 40 yards deep in the Malvern end zone, gets the good snap, good kick. Bounds at the 48 yard line, takes a left and roll down oh, uh, to the 48 of the Queen, and the tackle is made at the 47 yard line of Malvern. So Buchanan does a good job for Malvern, a net 37 yard punt. Yeah, it's good coverage for the Malvern Leopards coming down the field, a return of about five yards. And uh, Mario Jamerson looked nearly got clipped. Yeah, near about the 47. And uh, but there's a host of other leopards that come down and made the tackle and corral the young man and brings him down immediately. Yeah, the kid from the Queen really did a good job of getting his head and his body out there in front of him because uh, th that could have gone. It, Really easy could have gone the other way had uh, uh, Jamerson turned or twisted. 9.25 to go in the first half. The Queen with the football at the mile and 47-yard line. Irvin up under center is an eye formation. Give underneath to the fullback, and he powers his way down to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line of the Leopards. Watkins hangs on to him, and he's, he rides him down after five yards. But they're trying to slide that uh, fullback trap in there. They've got a pulling guard that's leading him into the hole and kicking out the linebacker, and the only person can hang on to him is a defensive line, but, and that's Watkins. And then, unfortunately, he grabs a hold of him and brings him down. Bring up second down and five for DeQueen. Guys, the Leopards are going to be lucky if they get three possessions in the first half. Yeah. The Queen hurries back to the line of scrimmage. Bring White in motion. to give this to White. Trying the right side of the line. He's hit and then just carries men down for the first down as he gets up to about the 32-yard line of Malvern. Guys, he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Wow. Well, big, powerful, big, powerful kid. And, and he's every bit of that... Uh, 220 pounds they've got him listed at and uh, he, he's if, if he's not 6'2", he's real close to it and like you say, looks like Missouri's really got him a good one. Yeah, he was hit near the 40 and he carries him 7 and 8 yards with several defenders on his back and, and before he's rode down near the 33. First and 10 for Queen. Tight formation, one man split to the right. Irvin takes a snap, gives to White again. White hit at the line of scrimmage and this time the Leopard's able to wrap him up there. And they'll stop the play. Allison and Watkins, and as well as Tony coming in and, and making sure he stopped. And, and, and there is no no gain on the play. Excuse me, that was 83. That's Terrence Jackson, yeah, and as Oshie, well as Crowley. Yeah, Osha Johnson was there to, to put his <laughs> every bit of his 289 pounds on him. Seems like misdirections have really given Malin Fitz early in this football game. Second down and 10 for the Queen. Again, one man splits the right, two up backs. Morgan goes in motion. Irvin drops straight back, looking to throw over the middle. 
has a man, but it is incomplete. Good coverage there from Murdoch as he was right on the heels of the intended receiver. That will bring up third down and ten. Yeah, Murdoch was over over the top, and King was underneath, and it would have had him in a perfect pass. Once again, it's a rainbow pass going down the field and just trying to dump it into the receiver. Yeah, he tried to hit Grant Dooley again, the 6'2", 170-pound uh, wideout, and uh, Dooley's got, he's a head taller than our cornerback, but like Johnny said, it had to be perfectly passed, and he kind of floated it down there. Third down and 10 for Queen at the Malvin 32-yard line. Irvin working out a shotgun, and we've got just like motion against DeQueen, the Leopards will get to move the DeQueen Leopards five yards back. Yeah, the, the Leopards looked to me like, Johnny, they were having a little trouble getting set themselves. Yeah, Malvern, Malvern was unsure of what kind of formation that the, the De Queen was in, so they were confused. The Queen was confused. The Queen got confused, and they wanted to get out there as fast as they could and, and try to take Malvern off guard and uh, unfortunately confuse themselves. Yeah, so it was just confusion over confusion. Yeah, so it cost them five and a big, long third down here for them, for them and uh, the Malvern Leopards need to hold them here. Third down and 15. Irvin again working out a shotgun. Two receivers to the right one to the left. Irvin takes a snap, drops straight back, gets pressure from Bell. Bell gets back up, holding is going to be called. Leverage picked it off, James King at the 25. He's across the 40, and up at the 44-yard line, the tackle is made. We'll see what the penalty is. It's going to get go against the Queen, and I believe it's a chop block, and then uh, Malvern is going to take possession by the interception and get the ball at uh, their own 44-yard line. That is a good call, Johnny. It was a chop block. Yeah, it was against Kevin Bell. Yeah. Kevin Bell was coming in there, and there were one of the uh, running backs tried to knock his legs out from underneath him. He gets back up, still puts pressure on the quarterback. He overthrows his receiver, <laughs> and when he uh, throws it over his receiver, Kevin, uh, excuse me, uh, James King Dang. steps in front of it, and he returns it up to the 44-yard line. So Malvern takes possession with 7:13 on the clock. That really shows you why there's a lot of people looking hard at Grady Allison as a junior for him to be heavily recruited next year just because of plays like that. First and 10 for Malvern. Trailer turns, gives. Henson up the middle. Henson with good yardage up to midfield. He'll be stopped there. Pick up of about six yards. We'll bring up second down and four. You know, Johnny was talking about, and that nice run by Henson, Johnny was talking about momentum a while ago, and it looks like it could be over there on the guys in white shirts. So uh, uh, hopefully we can just go ahead and take advantage of that turnover. James King goes split to the far side. Trent Bryant split to the near side for Malvern. I formation as Jared Davis is in at fullback. The give is to Henson. Off the right side. Breaks the tackle. Has the first down. He'll be brought down at the 43-yard line of DeQueen. Guys, I think it looks like Malvern's offense is a little bit focused on this drive. Coach Fogelman got them ready before they came out with the momentum change with King's interception. Uh, Henson steps over the right tackle and bounces it outside with a lead blocker, Davis, and making that good big surge on, on third, second down. Excuse me. 6.22 left here in the first half. The Leopards trailing 7 nothing and driving. Eye formation once again. One receiver to either side. Give Henson up the middle. There goes Henson. Still on his feet. Has the first down at the 30-yard line. Guys, that was nothing but Henson. After he breaks that line of scrimmage, he bounces it outside, and his speed gets him the first down inside the 30-yard line. You know, as the game has progressed, the band sh has shown up, and we have an out, really, for the length of the, of the trip and everything. Guys, we have an outstanding crowd from Malvern here. I'm, I'm going to say that the visitors over there at least two-thirds to three-fourths full the stands are and it's uh, uh, an outstanding group that, you know just continued support these leopards have first down and 10 for Malvern one receiver to either side again an eye formation Jerry Davis in at fullback the give is to Henson up the middle Henson hit at the line of scrimmage and he'll be dropped after a very short game that uh, will bring up second down for the Leopards, 5.35 to go here in the first half. Guys, nothing nothing <laughs> doing on the left-hand side. And, of course, Henson tries to break it across the grain and nothing doing. And uh, was fighting for everything he got, at least to get back to the line of scrimmage. Guys, we've done a lot of football games, a lot of football games. And this is the probably, if not the fastest moving one, one of the fastest we've been a part of. 
Second down and nine for Malvern Davis. Offset to the left side. Trailer fakes to give. Now looking to throw. Near side looking for Bryant. The corner of the end zone. And that one is overthrown. It will bring up third down and nine for the Leopards. And, and guys, uh, certainly no uh, particular drive in the first half is a must, but it sure would be nice to get this one and, and get the score back to even. Johnny, it looked to me like that uh, the receiver broke the route off uh, you know, because the ball was really thrown well out there. And uh, if he turns, breaks to the left, you know, he, he's got a touchdown. Yeah, it, just a little bit overthrown, but it, maybe the receiver slowed down just a moment too soon. Twins to either side for Trailer and the Lepers. Drop straight back, looking to throw over the middle. Right side pass is oh. incomplete. Pretty high. Bryant was looking for the uh, interference, and I think he is going to get it. Yeah, yeah, he ought to because his back yeah. was bent so far yeah. when the ball was there that uh, he should have got a, a penalty roughing the, <clears throat> excuse, the receiver yeah. before the ball got there. That, so. came, excuse me, John, that came in from the back, Judge, uh, uh, way almost under the uh, Queen. Uh, field up, uh, end zone. The line judge was right there by it, and uh, he may have been too close to see it. Yeah, he was. He was behind him, so the the, the field judge was able to uh, make that call, and it was a correct call. So what was third down and nine because of first and ten for Malvin, and now they have the ball at the 14 yard line. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Leopards trail seven to nothing. Mike, you, I mean, and Ron, I think that y'all both said it's a do or die. Yes, it is because you're not going to have that many opportunities <laughs> in a football game. This is our third possession, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is our third possession of the game. We've only got four minutes left in the first half. Trailer is up under center. One man in the backfield, two receivers to his left, one to his right. He turns, gives. Henson up the middle is inside the 10. And they will spot him, it looks like, at the nine-yard line. Pick up a six on the play. Guys, good job by the offensive line. Open up the holes. And you've got several of those Seth Coates right up the middle that's doing a great job at center. Did, made a good kick-out block to open up that hole straight up the middle. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now Trailer will set up in shotgun. Has Henson to his left. Thanks to Gill, throws near side pass to lead to Llewellyn. Llewellyn throws the end zone, touchdown, Melvin. You know, they tried to run that play a couple <laughs> times last week, Johnny, and they just couldn't quite get the – trailer couldn't get the ball out to, to Llewellyn. He was open last week, and this time it really worked, didn't it? Well, the, the thing that set it up, the receiver that was inside uh, and may <clears throat> really kind of clip the other defender, you know, makes the defenders run into each other and kind of seals off the deal for <laughs> For Llewellyn. Well, the isolated player of the game, Alfonso Torres, on to kick the extra point. The kick is up, and it is perfect. And the score is tied with four minutes and one second to go here in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. We can help you get that dream home, no matter how big or small, with a competitive rate mortgage from Malvern National Bank. Back, uh, back in the Queen where the Malvern Lovers have come back and tied this ball game with four minutes and one second to go here in the first half. Fast moving half, half as, we, as we've talked about uh, uh, all through the first half. Lovers only had their third possession in the first half and uh, there's likely only going to be one more possession in the half. Yeah. Torres on to kick the extra point for Malvern. He's going to angle this towards the sideline. Fair catch call for it. The 26 yard line yeah. and it will be first and 10 forward to Queen with 3 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the half. Nice job by our isolated player there Johnny, kicking it high enough that the coverage got down there and the receiver really didn't have any choice but really to make a fair catcher get smacked. Well you know the, the, the kicker plays such an important role on the special teams and that and with that talent can really make or break a good team because they can put you, put you in a positive situation. He's, he's had some very good kickoffs, even though that they're short in the type of kick they are. They're, they're very well put for the, for the young man. First and 10, forward to Queen. They come to the line of scrimmage in an I formation. One man split to the right. Irvin running the option, now going to keep it up the middle, breaks a tackle. He's got big running room at the 45, now breaks towards the sideline. Bryant looking to make a tackle. Now again, Irvin cuts across field. He may go all the way. He's at the 10, the 5, and finally clipped at the 3-yard line. 
and my goodness, what a run by Irvin. I was surprised uh, quite often. I, he may be, may be the other quarterback. I mean, he's fast, but he, does, he doesn't have outstanding sprinter speed because speed, speed, we had him cornered a couple times. But the, a great run. Mario Irvin. That was the one thing that the Leopards really needed to stay away from. We talked earlier about not letting the quarterback get loose, get get loose on your let number twenty get loose for for a long play, and uh, it was just not give up by our number tw our number twenty Trent, Trent Bryant to make the saving tackle right there at the yeah, Mario yeah. Jamerson. Yeah, Mario Jamerson. Yeah, he Jameson. clipped him right there around the two yard line. Sixty one yard run from Irvin as the the Queen comes back to the line of scrimmage. Give is the first man through, and we haven't seen a signal yet. It looks like the Queen did get in. They're going to call it those second down and spot the ball just shy of the goal line. Yeah, it's such a crowd down there on the goal line, you can't really tell who made the tackle. But he just turned around and handed it to the fullback straight up the gut, and he gets maybe a yard and a half. Quite honestly, guys, I'm not sure we'll be better off. Go ahead and let him in the end zone. Let's get the ball back and try to even it up. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you've always got the chance of a fumble or some type of turnover. Yeah, like this one, hopefully. Irvin okay. dives toward the line of scrimmage, and he'll have yeah, the, the touchdown. So the Queen takes a six-point lead with 2.37 to go here in the first half, and uh, after a series of long-time consuming drives, the Queen goes the length of the field basically in about uh, a minute and a half. Yeah, that was like you said, that was the one thing that that the that Malvern didn't need was, was to let that quarterback get loose. And uh, he did a good job of reversing his field uh, three times and uh, finally he got caught at the four but was able to punch it in. 2.37 to go. The snap is good. The kick is away. And it is no good. That could be big. Could be big. The score remains 13 to 7. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. We'll be back in just a moment. We've got the stamina to get you to your financial goals. We're Malvern National Bank. Back at the Queen, 237 to go in the first half. The Queen just goes, uh, let's see, what, 70. 40 yards, 76 yards uh, for the touchdown in three plays. It'll be interesting to see if uh, DeQueen chooses to go ahead and kick the ball deep to uh, our three dangerous back deep guys, or if they try to kick it to the kick it away from them or kick a, a high floater to the sideline like the leper, like Malvern has. I would imagine they try to kick it near the 20 yard line, kick it high, and uh, and then. <clears throat> May kick it to James King, which is our our, our, <laughs> our strongest back back there that's got the, the breakaway speed. Of course, Henson as well as Mario Jameson has the same. Martinez gets the kick away right down the middle. And penalty flags come down. It's like we may have been off size. Jameson fielded it cleanly. But we're going to try it again after scooting uh, DeQueen back five yards. That's one thing you don't really see a whole lot of uh, in high school or, or any kind of ball is an offside on, on the kickoff. So T will be moved back to the 35-yard line. Interesting. It will be interesting to see if the Queen's strategy on the kickoff changes at this point. He's offside. He's behind that line. Is he on the line? <laughs> So, DeQueen getting yeah. set once again. Yeah, seven's lining up offside. Uh, as long as they're not gone I'm past the 35. Just can't be past the, where the ball is. Okay. Martinez gets the kick away, fielded by Jamerson back at the 13. Across the 20, seen. the 30. He's at the 35 and brought down at the 38-yard line. They're going to spot him just shy of the 39. It's a great field position for Malvin as they try to tie this one up and possibly take the lead. Yeah, answer, if not, get a score. Again, Malvern has 233 left on the clock, and they're going to have the ball back in the second half, and it would be great for Malvern to turn up some points here going into halftime. Leopard has done a real good job of setting up that return for Jamerson. He had a wedge and uh, really picked up an extra 20 yards or so on that. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. 
You mean the backfield along with Trailer. Turns, gives to Jamerson, right side. Jamerson hit at the line of scrimmage, picks up a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. The clock will continue to roll. Two yeah. twenty-two to go. Guys, the, the speed, the lateral speed of DeQueen is just as fast as Malvern, if not faster. And you've got to take the punch to DeQueen and, and not try to run around them. They're just, they're just as quick as Malvern. One of those two linebackers, for, I'll get back to that. Trailer sets up in shotgun, takes a snap, drops straight back, looking to throw. Now escapes pressure, running with the football, up over the 45-yard line, and he will be brought down right on the spot, it looks like, at the 48 of Malvern. But that's shy of the 48, and that's going to bring up third and very short. Yeah, very good job of scrambling by David Trailer. He's felt the pressure, steps up in the pocket, didn't see anybody downfield, and takes it himself. And, and, and good run by David. Third down and two for Malvern. Trailer up under centers. Two receivers to either side. One man alone in the backfield. Turn, give, up the middle, and the Lampers will get the first down. While they reset the change, I was going to say the, the, the clean linebackers, 44, 43, and 44, and 45, uh, 43 and 45, are they alternate in there at uh, at at fullback, and uh, they've got fullback speed, fullback power, and they are really good linebackers. Jamison and Henson join Trailer in the backfield. He sets up in shotgun. Again, three receivers for Malvern. Trailer again dropping straight back, looking to throw. Has some pressure. Throws far sideline. Has a man. The pass is incomplete. Mm. Diving effort along the far sideline. But that will bring up second down and 10 with a minute eight to go here in the first half. Yeah, taking a shot down the field to, to King and then laid it up over his head. And I believe it was over, over near the sidelines, if not out of bounds, and uh, just floated a little bit too far. Yeah, James King, and he likes that opportunity you know, to have, that, have an opportunity to go ahead and get that ball. Again, Jamerson and Henson join trailer in the backfield. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Second down and 10. Trailer takes a snap again, drops back, looking throw near right. side pass complete at the 35. Cutting up field is Bryston Barnes, and he'll be brought down at the 25 yard line. Great job after the catch, Bryston Barnes. He catches it. He gets around his his defender, and then he makes the inside cut and gets another five yards down the field. We, we, I'm sorry, good job. Go ahead. But I just I was just thinking that it, he. With that extra yardage, gives Malvern an opportunity for a field goal if they get another 10 yards. Yeah, I mean, and like I said earlier, Bryce Barnes been out here kind of ignored most of the ball game, and uh, he's one on one looks like with a linebacker out there. So that's that's a, he's looking at him again. Again, Barnes with the catch at the 20 yard line, brought down at the 18. 45 seconds. Leopards hurry back to the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to take a timeout. 41 seconds to go in the first half. Malvern trails to Queen, 13 to 7. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season from our Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings. An 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Once again, back at DeQueen. 41 seconds to go in the first half. Mal excuse me, Malvin trails DeQueen 13-7. And the Leopards are in scoring position now. Have the ball at the DeQueen 18-yard line. Yeah, anytime we get inside the 20, and, and Mike did it, brought it to our attention a while ago, really, uh, Torres, uh, our isolated player, and our outstanding uh, kicker, you know, he, he's subject to kick one from there, and more than likely has, has a leg and, and the ability to make a lot of them. From where they're at now, would be about a 35, 36-yard. Two wideouts, four miles, and offset uh, is Jared Davis, Henson, alone in the backfield. Trader looking throw over the middle. Pass is complete to King at the 10-yard line. And that will move the sticks and stop the clock momentarily. If you just joined us, uh, 13-7 to seven Leopards trailed to Queen. 35 seconds left here in the uh, in the second quarter, and the Leopards are down inside the right about the 10-yard line. Looks like 
James King may have been uh, shook. Boy, that was, I mean, he went across the middle, and, and James knew he was going to get hit. Johnny went ahead and brought the ball in and, and made an outstanding catch. Yeah, he got undercut whenever the uh, <clears throat> defenders were coming up under him and got his leg tangled, and it appears that he's hurt his ankle, if not his knee. I hope it's his ankle instead of his knee because uh, <clears throat> it, it appears that he's kind of being gingerly on it. Yeah, it looks – it. Yeah, I guess and I would, yeah, because he, he's really favoring that ankle and, and he, he was he hasn't grabbed the back of his knee, which is usually a good sign when they don't do that. Ankles are bad, but knees are worse. First and goal from the 10-yard line, Jared Davis in the fullback, I formation. Give, hits it right side, cuts up field inside the five-yard line, slips down there. And we've got a timeout on the field. The Leopards have done a great job of saving their timeouts. We've got one left with 23 seconds left. And we're, uh, we're all with Johnny right on about the four-yard line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Henson did a great job cutting up field. We'll go ahead and keep it here uh, to the timeout. Guys, the Malvern, uh, and, well, really both teams, after starting off fairly slowly offensively, uh, seem to be finding their spark. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, it's it's a, it's a, just a tribute to this the coaching job that, that the offensive coaches have done with this with these leopards. We knew all along that they were going to be able to move it move it down, and and uh, it's something we've seen them do in the past. And and we're down here, and we just need to go ahead and uh, get seven points. The leopards could actually, with a touchdown here, could go in with a halftime lead, which would be big uh, on the road in a big, big game, uh, depending upon playoff situations. Well, it's going to be a full backfield for Malvin. I haven't picked up, I know Jerry Davis is in there, and I can not pick up the, no, the number of the other young man lined up all set to his right. Henson, of course, is the tailback. Second down and goal from the four. Give, right side, and that is Henson. He is hit after a very short gain, actually maybe a slight loss on the play. Uh, looks like the Leopards have taken their last time out and uh, 18 seconds here. So uh, you, you got to think, Johnny, maybe a, a pass to the end zone and, and then maybe two passes to the end zone and, and uh, possibly the, and then kick the field goal. Well, you know, you've only got one, one shot unless you if, – if you don't get that, you've got to kick because that will bring up fourth down. Okay, I didn't know it's third down. My bad. Okay. Yeah, we've got one, one shot then. Yeah, you've almost got to pass it in the end zone. <clears throat> what I would almost consider, if you're going to do a run and play, you're going to have to do a quarterback draw, spread everybody out, and let uh, let David Trailer find his hole. If you're going to do a quarterback draw or a run, if not, you're going to have to find somebody like number five or number twenty that'll pick up the slack when since King is out for the moment. Yeah, and it's uh, the the, the thing about it is, like you say, get the ball into the end zone, and and uh, at, at all at all, you know, we got to avoid a sack because a sack would. Uh, uh, could be disastrous here with, with 18 seconds left. So, Coach Fogel has talked to him, Mike, and uh, has got him set, looks like. Again, full bank for the power eye formation. One man split to the near side, and that looks to be... It's King. It is King. I wasn't sure if that was him back in, but it is. Trailer takes a snap, looking to throw far side towards the corner of the end zone. James King touchdown, Melvin! Great call! Oh, what a what a catch over his shoulder, and he was running hobbling on his, his hurt <laughs> ankle. <laughs> He's still hobbling, and what a great catch! Oh, it was a Willie Mays catch over his, over his shoulder, yeah. and wonderful place ball by David Trailer. David put the ball out there where there's only one person could catch it, and it was James King and. Uh, Leopards with 12 seconds here have a chance to take a 14 to 13 lead. Alfonso Torres is on to kick. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. Alfonso had some heat then too, guys. And uh, big, big. Uh, let's keep it here. Big, big score for the Leopards right here, Mike. It's uh, you just can't say how important it is to come back and answer after the Queen goes down the field, goes 70 some odd yards in, in less than a little over a minute, and with two minutes uh, to what, 240, 230, something like that, Leopards get the ball back and uh, take it down and uh, a pass from Trailer to King and work 14 to 13, Johnny. And guys, it was well managed by the coaching staff of keeping it in, managing the time inside the one minute mark. You were down near the 25 yard line 
with about uh, 40 seconds left on the clock and managed to get it into the end zone inside that. That bodes well for the offense and also the offensive coaching staff. 14-13, Malvin leads as Alfonso Torres gets set to kick. High, short kick. Fumble! Fumble. This Leopard's all around it. We'll see if they came up with it. The Leopard's, uh, Leopard's well, say they did. Don't think Second. It was 12 seconds on the clock. They took one second over. Malvin does come up with well, the football. Well, <laughs> the clock just stopped at 11. It's well, now, here's the thing. It had never started. Well, it was 12 seconds when we kicked it. Yeah. It should have started when the young man made contact. So I guess he contacted anyway. Leopards with 10 seconds left, Johnny. They can go deep into the end, you know, go deep one more time, and uh, we fully expect them to, don't you? Well, I think that they ought to run a pass pattern about 20 yards and give Fonzo Torres an opportunity to kick a long distance field goal. Four wideouts, four mile. That's a that's a lot to do in 10 seconds, Gibbs, on a high school. <laughs> Trailer up under center takes a snap, looking to throw far side, pass complete, and getting out of you bounds. You, you, may been, you may have called that right there, Gibbs, because that was a short pass, hoping to get down to the out, you know, get inside that 30 yard line to give mm -hmm. Torres a chance. Well, they're going to have to do it. Well, you're almost going to have to throw it deep now. <clears throat> yeah, the ball spotted at the 33 from this point. Uh, you're looking at a 50 yard field goal. Here he comes. You know, we, you picked the right night to pick the ISO player. Uh, they ran another second off the clock. <laughs> they can't ask down to six seconds. <laughs> and now the officials making sure that there's someone back there to judge whether or not Torres makes it. If he makes this one, this is going to be right from the 40-yard line. It will be a 50-yard attempt. Okay. Now we've got a timeout. Uh, the referee called. This is an official's timeout. I'm not sure what the delay was for. Now let's restart the 25-second clock. So yeah. The kick is away. It is just oh. short. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> short. short. <laughs> and it didn't run off the clock. Oh. He missed it by. He missed it by. How can that not run four seconds? A off? yard. The that clock should be zero zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why you like your home field clock runners. Well, that's uh, why when you get in the playoffs, you want home field advantage so you can make sure the the clock management man yeah. gets it to zero zero. <laughs> that was that was as close to a fifty yard as you're ever going to see. Not, I mean, it was just came. I mean, it was it was going to split the uprights. I was hoping it hit the crossbar and bounce over it and. Uh, didn't quite get there. Probably missed it about five yards. No he would have made it a 45-yarder. Yeah. One second left for the Queen, and they line up in a tight formation. Irvin takes a knee, and that is <laughs> going to end the first half of play. Malvern leads 14-13 at the Queen. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Thinking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Once again, back at the Queen, where the Lepers lead 14-13, and we are set for the second half kickoff. The Queen will be kicking the Malvern. The Leopards moving from our right to left here on the home side of the stadium. Gonzalez gets the kick away. It will be fielded by Jamison at the 13-yard line across the 20. He's at the 25. He's got room across the 30, the 35, and finally drug down at the 38-yard line. So great starting position for the Malvern Leopards. Guys, they just don't understand that Jamerson just as quick as any of them, if not the fastest man on the Malvern football team. And uh, he's just as elusive and quick to break it long yardage as he's brought it up to the 38-yard line. John, he was just one broken tackle there from taking it to the house. Yeah, it's uh, be interesting. I was going to ask you to get a chance, and I'll come back and ask you what we can expect out of DeQueen once they get the ball here in the second quarter, after we hopefully score on this drive. 
Two receivers to the left, one to the right for King. Henson in the backfield alongside him. To give this to Henson up the middle, he picks up about three, maybe four yards on the play. Guys, that was a great design play. You've got Grady Austin in the, in the tight end position. He pulls and lead. he's the lead blocker into the hole, picking up the linebacker, allowing a, a gain of a long three yards. My apologies. I gave that carry to Henson. That was Jamerson. He is in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Four trailer and the Malvern offense. Again, Jamerson up the middle. Jamerson works his way up to the 44-yard line. Pick up of about three more, and the Leopards will need about four yards for the first. And guys, they have to get about the 37, 47-and-a-half yard line for the first. And uh, Jamerson just weaving his way in the hole and gains about three yards on that carry. You know, over the years, Jamerson being the senior for the last three years, we've watched him carry the ball a lot. He's a really a good back. Jamerson alone in the backfield. Trailer under center now backs away and looks for instructions from the sideline. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Trailer looks to throw underneath. Pass complete to King. King was hit very near the first down marker, maybe just shy. Wow. That's going to wow. be a close spot. The yeah. line judge over there really did, in front of the Malvern bench, really did a good job to, 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 to mark James' forward progress, and he may be a half a football short. It is going to be very close. We'll wait on the referee's signal. Guys, they're talking to one of the Queen players, and and I don't know exactly what one of the players are saying, but uh, the main referee's in his face talking to him. <clears throat> no flags were thrown, and now they're bringing out the chains uh, to measure the play. King <clears throat> runs a, about, about a five-yard coming back to the quarterback pattern, and uh, David Trailer gets out to him immediately, and he is stopped with forward progress immediately, and uh, the ball is spotted for his forward progress. It's close. It's inches. It's oh. I mean, it really depends. Maybe it's going to be about two to three inches it's shy. Looking from here, decision here for for Coach Fogelman and, and the Leopards. Uh, you, we we top time and time and time again. We we just. Based on the first half, Mike and Johnny, we just don't get many possessions, and this is one, do you go ahead and try to keep the ball or do you punt it away? Well, with, with three inches, you know, <clears throat> I would think that Mallory is going to attempt to go for it, but Johnny, Johnny going to go, you go with the uh, quick snap? I, I would. If, you know, if the quarterback knows the pressure play is he, him and the center get together and then go on his own movement. Queen stacks up at the line of scrimmage. Trailer will step under center. He will keep it. He's got the first down as he gets up to midfield. That's one good thing about having an old quarterback up here in the booth with us, Johnny. Just tell us what he did. Well, he, he gets up at the line of scrimmage, and at first he looks over where the, the pressure is going to come from the linebackers and where he f sees at the soft spot. He follows the, the, the pension guard and just follows the lead blocks on the strong right-hand side and, and gets the first down easy. I was going to say he snuck it for a yard and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Trailer up under center, looks to throw. Underneath, pass complete to Llewellyn. At midfield at the 45 and knocked down as he gets down to the 43-yard line of the Queen. Guys, they just do not respect Patrick Llewellyn and his ability to catch and run after the, ki after the catch. And he catches it easy and gains about six, long six yards on the play near the the Queen Leopards 44-yard uh, line. They were three-yard line. Mark David Trailer doing a real good job of float, getting that ball out there and to where only Llewellyn can catch it, too. Second down, we'll call it three. It's a long three, nearly four yards. Trailer up under center, turns, gives. Up the middle, and it's Jamerson. Jamerson breaks the outside. He's got the first down and breaks down the sideline. At the 20-yard line, now cuts across the field. He's going to go in. Touchdown, Melvin. Wow, wow. I tell you what, and, and I was watching James King out there. All James King did was just kind of get in the way, and then Jamerson cut back behind him, Johnny. Guys, that was almost very similar play as the quarterback from the Queen did a while ago. He just breaks, breaks it across over pursuing uh, the Queen Leopards, uh, allows him to come back across the green and scores without being touched. Alfonso Torres on to kick the extra point for Malvern. 
The good snap is good. The kick is away. It is good. And the Lepers now lead 21-13 with 9.24 to go in the third quarter. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Here at Malvern High School. My favorite thing about Malvern would have to be the teachers because all of them are personable. The thing I like about Malvern is that you get college hours while you're in high school. The thing I like the most about Malvern is we're striving to improve on all of our standardized tests. Passion, pride, and excellence. Malvern High School. Once again, back at the Queen where the Lepers have just extended their lead to eight points, leading 21-13 now, 9-24 to go here in the third quarter. You think the Lepers really hadn't scored all that many points, guys? They scored on three of five possessions. That's a pretty good percentage, isn't it? Torres with the high short kick, fair catch called for and made at about the 38-39 yard line, and so DeQueen will take over there. They don't make the mistake of trying to run with this one. Guys, they have the uh, <clears throat> not the one of the linemen are backing up and attempting to catch it. The receiver that caught the touchdown early on in the ball game, uh, he steps up and catches the ball near the 40 yard line. It will be interesting, Johnny and Mike, and the point I was going to ask earlier is, is what you, what we think DeQueen's offensive philosophy is going to be here in the second half. And I think it just may have changed being down uh, uh, touchdown and actually a touchdown and, and, and an extra, two extra points. It would be eight points, wouldn't it? Yes. Give to Bar Ball is loose. And it is picked up by... Oh, oh my. my. Picked up by White, and he has dropped back at the 25-yard line. God. Morgan got the carry and fumbled it, and went right into White's arm. Yeah, Terrence Jackson did a great job containing the, the ball bounces back up into the big running back, and I was afraid that he had a lot of running room in front of the Malvern stands. And Terrence Jackson, with his containment, and he grabs a hold of the young man, trips him up, and he brings up a long loss on the play back near the 27-yard line of the DeQueen Leopards. Yeah, that might have been that situation. It might have been better just to fall on the fumble right there and take your five or six-yard loss. Second down, about 21 yards. Give up the middle. White has some running room as he breaks a couple of tackles, gets up to the 25-yard line. That will bring up third down. And about 14, he's he's such a strong runner. He runs through arm tackles. You've got to wrap up that big back and not allow him to get his full momentum going because he'll just continue to run through people. Ball spotted at the 36-yard line. It is third down for DeQueen. Lepers, I need to find uh, 15 out here, and we got, uh, got got some coverage out here. Here we go. Faith again. Now, pressure on the quarterbacks. He looks to throw underneath passes incomplete. Wow, Grady was all over him, Mike. The, yeah, pressure, the, ahead, Mike. the true pressure came from uh, <clears throat> Kevin Ball whenever he was chasing the quarterback. He bounces out one more time, and he has more pressure with Allison and uh, one other defender from Malvern and makes him rush his throw and now brings up that long fourth down conversion, which will be a punt. Fourth down and 14. Forward to Queen as they get set to kick this one away. Now, Irvin is the punter. That's the quarterback as well. And he'll set up at about his 24-yard line. Gets a good snap, gets the kick away. Fielded at the 30-yard line of Malvern across the 35 to 40 and tackle made at the 44-yard line. Guys, we had a good block by Devon Ball getting back and, yeah. and making a good block to the outside and springs <clears throat> our, our back to get another five, six, seven yards up to the 44-yard line. 7.40 here in the third quarter. If you just joined us or just checking, uh, Leopards lead this one 21-13 to 13 and uh, just taking over on their own, what, Mike, about the 44-yard 40, 40 line. line. Jameson in at tailback. We'll expound on that in a moment. Carried the load of the Malvern's previous possession. Trailer working out a shotgun. Gives Jamerson left side, looking for riding room. Across the 45, cuts up field, across midfield. At the 40-yard line, and finally run out of bounds up near the 35. They're also going to get another uh, the queen for a late hit. Yeah. yeah, another 15. They roughing him up after the play. Yeah. After he was out of bounds, and then they just throw him to the ground and gives him another 15 yards. The ball will be placed on the 20-yard line. 
uh, and Jamerson is so quick and just bounces it out to the outside. And uh, that, that's unfortunate that the Queen Leopard did that for the Malvin Leopards. Oh, well, I thought they were going to call a late hit. He called a face mask and apparently called it an inadvertent foul. Wow. Oh, I thought wow. it was roughing him as he goes out of bounds. I'm, I apologize. Well, that's what I thought as well. King goes split to the far side. Looks like Llewellyn and Trent Bryant split to the near side. Jamerson alone in the backfield of the tailback as Trailer steps under center. Takes a snap. Gives. Jamerson right side. Gets to the corner. At the 20-yard line, the flag comes in. They're going to get the Leopards for holding. Yeah, the sad thing about that, that was a hold behind the play that uh, Jamerson's got is, is so quick. He brings a really different dimension to this backfield right now with his cuts, and he's quick, doesn't he, uh, Johnny? Yeah, he does, and as soon as he gets away and gets to the end quicker than the, the, the defenders can get away from the blocks, and uh, Malvin's offensive line is trying to get him and help hold him uh, as best they can. Uh, so they can't get away uh, while they're blocking. But uh, got a hold uh, behind the play, and unfortunately Malvin has assessed that 10-yard penalty, 10 penalty. That penalty moves the ball back to the 35-yard line. It'll be first down and 15 for Malvern. Trailer working out a shotgun, gives to Jamerson again, up the middle, and Jamerson gets over the 35, down to the 32-yard line, pick up a three on the play. It'll be second down. Johnny, we, we noticed, too, that we started to say earlier, uh, Dante Henson uh, took a lick and may have hurt a, a leg or an, or an ankle or something there late in the second quarter, and we haven't seen him here, here in the early going in the in the third quarter, uh, and that's why we've seen so many, ca many carries. And uh, Right before the touchdown in the end zone to King, at, right before halftime, Henson uh, followed his blocks, and it appeared that he got rolled up on behind in his ankle. And uh, he hasn't been back in the ball game since. Second down and 12 for Malvin. Trailer steps under center. Davis in at fullback. Now Trailer oh, nice looking play. to throw. Breaks away across the 30 yard line. He's going to keep it. Slides down as he nears the 20. They'll spot him, I believe, at the 21, maybe the 22 yard line. Pick up a nine on the play. Very good run by Trailer. He's trying to get to the first down mark, which is right at the 20 yard line. It's going to bring up a very short. Third down and maybe two yards to go. Just under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Lepers lead 21-13. The DeQueen Lepers defense has put themselves in a huge hole if they allow themselves to get down 14 points. I don't know if their offense can come back and score. High formation for the Lepers. One receiver to either side. Leopards had some confusion there. They're going to take a timeout. We'll take a break as well. 21-13, Malvern leads here in the third quarter. Five minutes, 39 seconds to go. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Hi, I'm Josh. It up, Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for my Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings an 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. And we return to DeQueen, where Malvern leads the DeQueen Leopards 21-13. Malvern has the ball deep in uh, DeQueen territory. Third and two at the 22-yard line. Yeah, yeah I, I like the way the Leopards sprinting back out here after that touchdown. I mean, after that timeout, too, Johnny. They, they've they got a little spring in their step, don't they? Yeah, it appears that Kevin Bell is on the inside. I'm, I'm, I believe that the ball will be going up the middle. Give this to Jamerson left side. He's got the 20-yard line down to the 16-yard line. That'll easily be enough for a Leopard first down. I'm yeah. kind of laughing, Johnny. Go ahead and tell, tell all of that. Well, right. <laughs> what Bell was doing out there. Kevin Bell lit up a bell <laughs> out here on, on the left-hand side. And then he kicks out his block, springs Jamerson for the first down. And, and Mallory has first down and 10 at, at the 16-yard uh, line of the Queen Leopards. Ball spotted just shy of the 16. As King goes split the far side, Bryant split the near side. I formation for the Leopards. Jamerson at tailback. Jared, at, Jared Davis at fullback to give us Jamerson. Looking, cuts upfield. We'll get down to the 15-yard line. Pick up of a couple on the play, maybe a yard and a half. And that will bring up second down. I just couldn't find anything, and there wasn't <clears throat> enough 
openings out to the outside, so I had to cut it back inside, and a host of uh, DeQueen defenders were in the hole, and he wasn't able to get anywhere. Second down and eight for Malvern. Kingo split again to the far side with Bryant to the near side. Jared Davis offset. Trailer rolls out to his left, throws underneath, pass, complete the 10, the 5, and Jared Davis is down to the 4-yard line, and that's another Leopard first down. Well, I, I got to say something. I'm going to jump on you here, Johnny, because you did. they did exactly what you said the Leopards needed to do early on before the ball game. A play-action pass, David Trailer run, rolls out to his left on the roll and makes the pass. Well, the best part about it, he got rid of the ball when he saw the receiver that was open. And as soon as he did, he got it out to, to Jerry Davis, and he was able to get the yards after the catch, and that's a first down. First and goal from the 40-yard line. Iron formation. Give Jameson looking for running room. Cuts up the field. He's a four-touchdown mile. That's just great moves. Just great move, Johnny. That is just punching it in. And when you got the, the Dequeen Leopards back on their heels, the Malvern Leopards punch them in the mouth. Leopards take a 27-13 lead. Alfonso Torres is on to kick the extra point for Malvern. That touchdown right there hurts, guys, because uh, that really puts the pressure on the Dequeen Leopards. And uh, they're running attack, and that's not a high-powered offense. Torres gets the kick away. It is good. And so the Malvern Lepers now lead 28-13. 4-11 to go here in the third quarter. We're, we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Malvern Leopard football. Dreaming of your retirement? Let's plan it together. We're Malvern National Bank. Enjoy life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. 4-11 to go here in the third quarter. Malvern has once again extended their lead. It's now 28-13 here in Dequeen as Alfonso Torres gets set to kick off for the Leopards once again. And, and Mike, while we're at break, uh, the, one of the main reasons why we scored is what Ron mentioned is that uh, Mario Jamers has got fresh legs. He hasn't been beaten up on the on the on the, the rushing touchdown, so uh, that gives Malvern an advantage. Deep kick this time, fielded at the 11 yard line, across the 25, the 35 yard line, and tackle made up near the 39. We're going to spot it. At the 38, and that's where DeQueen will take over, first and 10. The ball was on the ground again, and, and, and the, the DeQueen Leopards came up with it, and uh, then dodged another bullet there, Johnny. Yeah, it's, it would be a knife in the back right now if the DeQueen Leopards uh, shoot themselves in the foot again, but uh, <clears throat> DeQueen Leopards got to come out, and they got to try to do something against the Malvern defense because the Malvern defense has shut them down so far in the second half. Irvin up under center eye formation, running to his left, or excuse me, his right, wow. and he is going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a slight loss on the play as he runs the option. Guys, that, that is the linebacker and two defensive linemen that get out and tackle that elusive quarterback, and that, that's a gain of maybe a half of a yard, but nothing doing. Eric Watson had him, wasn't, wasn't going to let loose of him. Excellent job by Eric. Devon, go ahead, Johnny. Devon Ball just finishes him off to the ground. That's why I was just going to carry on with what Ron mentioned. Yeah. Irvin now setting up in shotgun. Gives underneath to Morgan, and Morgan is going to be hit as he gets to the 40-yard line. Pick up about a yard on the play. That'll bring up third down and about eight yards for DeQueen. Guys, that's just a, a great job of the men up front, all four of them in on the tackle, not allowing anything doing for the DeQueen Leopards. Our, our, our defensive front four is just doing an outstanding job here in, in this ball game. just really an outstanding job. And just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Irvin again sets up in shotgun. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Looking to throw. Near side. Passes. Tipped and picked off. Picked off by Trent Bryant. He's got lots of running room at the 30. Now trying to cut up field and does. Finally run out of bounds 
But the Lopers are going to have the ball in great field position. They're going to have it near the 10-yard line, and the quarterback runs him out of bounds. Great job. It was tipped <clears throat> just about five yards down the field, and it just in the arms. And he was allowed to run it back from around the 50-yard line or around the 45 of the Malvern Leopards down to the 10. So wonderful play by the Malvern Leopards. Well, one thing we talked earlier, and we talked a little bit off the air, guys, that uh, the Leopards are forcing, the, our, the Malvern Leopards are forcing DeQueen to do something that, that they don't do, and they don't do well. And I said earlier, if we could force them into the passing game, that would really play into our hands, particularly with our D-backs and our linebackers and our front four, our, our total, total defensive team. First and goal for Malvern and after the Queen 10-yard line. Trailer will step under center. Jamerson alone in the backfield. They give this to Jamerson and <laughs> falls. Falls as he gets the line of scrimmage. Really not hit there. I'm not sure if he was trying to make a cut there or not, but the Leopards will lose a yard. It appeared he t tangled up with David Trailer's feet uh, getting, <laughs> getting, the, getting the ball and unfortunately lands near the 12-yard line. Loss of a couple on the play. It's second down and 12. Two receivers to the right. James King split alone to the left side. Trader working out of shotgun as Jamerson set up to his right. Gives to Jamerson. Right side. Escapes a man down up near the 10-yard line. Or excuse me, down near the 5-yard line. We'll wait on the spot near the five, and, and again, he bounced it off. He, <clears throat> he's following his block. It looks like Grady Allison out there, and, and, or excuse me, is that Whitman out there? Excuse me, I can't see the numbers as well. It's set number 70. Lee Block and uh, trying to kick out, and, and Mario Jameson tries to bounce it out to the outside. Unfortunately, he could not get away. Ball spotted at the eight-yard line, and that'll bring up third and goal. Jared Davis comes back in, so we don't know whether he's out for a receiver or out to block. We've got some confusion, and the Leopards are going to talk things over. 1.21 to go here in the third quarter. Malvern leads 28-13. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Banking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Back at Dequay, a minute 21 to go here in the third quarter. Malvin leads it 28-13. They've got the ball third and goal after the Queen eight-yard line. You know, I, we got a second here, and, and there's been a lot of rumors floating around. This is my last regular season ball game, guys. I've, you know, there's a lot of people asking, and uh, this is 10 years, and, and I'll do all the playoff games and everything, but uh, I'm hanging it up and leaving it to you young guys. Well, it's been a pleasure, Ron, working with you for all these years, and of course I've been with you for about seven or eight, and uh, I've enjoyed every moment and all these road trips and, and helped to bring the broadcast, and I appreciate you uh, bringing me into this, uh, this network because it's been a lot of fun with you. It's not what you said. <laughs> Trailer takes the snap, drops back, oh, wow. throws in, wow. touchdown Melvin. Great play by David Trailer. James King with the reception, and the Lippers have extended their lead once again, now 34-13. to 13. Guys, it, it, it was a great fake, and then yeah. also he turns around and comes back to King, back across the grain, and that's where King does a five yards and in, and he was all alone in the end zone. Easy catch for King. Uh, and David rolled out there and, and really just put the ball where it had to be. Torres' kick is away, and it is good. The lead now is 35-13. to 13. Leopards in control here so far in the third quarter. A minute 17 to go. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Enjoy your life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. We've got the strength to help you build a solid financial future. We're Malvern National Bank. <laughs> Back at the Queen. A minute 17 to go here in the third quarter. Sorry about that. We, we have a little fun every now and then off air. Oh, goodness. Torres with the high short kick. 
Fair catch called for and made at the 41, maybe the 42 yard line. The Queen will get the football there first and 10. Ballard leading. 35-13 with a minute 16 to go in the third quarter. And the Queen's in a position that they that they really don't want to be in. And uh, a big power running team. And, uh, uh, well, when you're against the, the, the best defense in the conference, you do not want to be behind 35-13 to 13 and hoping to score a bunch of points uh, going into the fourth quarter. The Queen comes to the line of scrimmage, tied formation. Irvin brings White in motion. The give is to White, right side, breaks a tackle, and gets up to the 45-yard line. Pick up of three on the plate. It'll be second and seven. We ran through the, the big arms of Osha Johnson and, and <clears throat> Watkins and a, a few other host, host of Malvern Leopards have to bring him down. You just can't just bring him down one-on-one. Gain of about three on the play. The ball spotted at the 45-yard line of the DeQueen Leopards. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter now as Irvin and the DeQueen Leopards come to the line of scrimmage. Again, wide in motion. Irvin on the keeper, cuts up field, and is going to be dropped at the 46-yard line, pick up about a yard on the play. Yeah, Watkins and Oka Johnson both corral the quarterback, and the quarterback cannot go anywhere. Not even a one inch loud on that play. He's going to bring up a third down and six for the uh, DeQueen Leopards. Well, what's happening, Johnny and and and, and Mike is the our front four. They're, they're whipping that. They've got that offensive line whipped now, and they can play them off and uh, make the plays before the linebackers can even get there. So far, should be the last play of the third quarter. Leopards show blitz. They do give. Is off the right side and tackle made at the 49 yard line. When we return to start the fourth quarter, the Queen Lappers will be facing fourth down and about three. Here, we're through three quarters of play. The Lappers lead 35 13. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Banking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello? and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you, then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Once again, we return to DeQueen Malvern leading 35-13 as we get the fourth quarter underway. DeQueen now facing fourth down, about two and a half, we'll call it three yards. Yeah, this is a dangerous play here to to get sucked up and uh, try to go over the top for a quick seven. White dotting the eye for DeQueen, gets the toss, near side, hit the line of scrimmage, but he barrels his way for the first down, and just an extraordinary effort there by White. Yeah, White got that all all on himself. He had had two or three leopards on him, and and he's just a big, strong kid, and uh, tough to bring down like that. Well, he, he doesn't show to be huge up up top. He, his his strength is his lower body. And yeah. You can tell by the, his thighs and his, his calves. He's so strong from his lower body, he just pushes the pile. And that's yeah. what happened on that fourth day. Yeah, you know, he gets up to Missouri and gets on a weight program, and, and he will be a man. Tight formation for DeQueen. One man split to the left side to bring Morgan in motion. Throw underneath, oh. pass broken up by James King, and he's upset with himself. He thought he should have had a pick six. Yeah, he'd had a pick six. Yeah, if he was <clears throat> a little quicker on the play, he'd have had it. Second down and ten now for DeQueen. And as Johnny has mentioned and Ron has mentioned a couple of times, this is not a quick strike offense. And they trail now by 22 points with 11.30 to go here in the game. Well, the Malvern defense, it, it's, it's be, they get tougher as the game goes on. And uh, right now in this third quarter, they whipped them in the third quarter and, and bringing it in the fourth. Morgan in motion. And Devin, all the Devin, offside. Devin did get in. Devin was, was trying to jump in. And, and uh, Devin Ball is, <laughs> is so aggressive as, as a linebacker there. And uh, he's been dancing around causing problems all night long. And they just he just got across the line of scrimmage. And, uh, yeah, he can't get in the neutral zone. Get in the neutral zone. Doesn't matter if he touches them or not. I mean, it, it, the bottom line, he cannot get into where the – we're inside the football, the length of the football, and that's the neutral zone. And he cannot get into that. He penetrated that. 
and brings on a modern uh, five-yard penalty. Second and five now for DeQueen as Irvin steps under center. Turns, prefers now to reverse to White. White hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks a couple tackles, still on his feet at the 40, and finally is going to be brought down back at the 41, but they'll give him progress up to the Malvern 40-yard line. No, th- that shouldn't be right. He, 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 ran, he, ran back, he ran back two yards himself. The spot is, that's, a, that's not a good spot. Well, we can't hear the whistle. You know, they might have blew it dead, that's but unfortunately, uh, we're in a quiet room with an, a great view of the great football game. Yeah. It's an outstanding stadium uh, facilities here. Third down and two now for DeQueen. Ball at the 40-yard line of Malvern Irvin up under center, and that, that had to be motion on somebody. Irvin on the carry, gets the outside and goes out of bounds. Maybe it wasn't actually a, an illegal procedure. I think the center moved about to, uh, he moved a second before anybody else. As long as he got, he could, the center got the ball to the, the quarterback saw something. They've got to go. They've got to go. And the center got, got, got it back to him, and he took off before. Uh, I don't believe that was a design play, John. No, uh, it appears by the motions of the quarterback, he kind of st- he was kind of stunned when the ball was in his hands, and then all of a sudden he takes off where the, the play was supposed to be developed, and uh, and then everybody started reacting from there. Gains to the 32-yard line of Malvin. It's a first down and 10 for DeQueen. Eye formation with White dotting the eye. They're moving that that fullback. Right. Hit at the line of scrimmage this time. He's going to be driven back and get nothing on the play. And I'm with you, Ron. The fullback moved about a half step before anybody else. They they they've been borderline on that all night. We got the, we have the Malvern coaches here on our right in the booth, and we can hear them screaming in there every now and then, guys. And and, and, and but they are. They look, he looks like he's about a half a count fast. Kevin Bell left, <laughs> met Mr. White in the hole, and uh, Kevin Bell won that battle because he's he's a lot stronger <laughs> than that running back. They give him forward progress. About a yard on the play, it'll be bring up second down and nine as Irvin and the DeQueen Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. You get an eye formation, 9.56 to go here in the ball game. Irvin up under center, takes a snap. Looking to throw, drops straight back, has some pressure, throws towards the end zone, it is... I started to Good say picked play. off, but yeah. broken up. Yeah. Several lepers there in on the play. Great coverage. <laughs> I thought James King had it, Johnny. I just uh, James King jumped a little quick in front of it, but knocking it down appears to be Trent Bryant, and the ball bounds to the ground and uh, brings up a long third down conversion again for the uh, DeQueen Leopards. The, again, the DeQueen Leopards passing game is a – <clears throat> throw it up and let him go up and get it, and uh, not a quick striking passing attack. So uh, the Queen's only threat is on the ground. Third down and nine now for the Queen. 9:45 to go in the ball game. Irvin will work out of shotgun. It's two, uh, excuse me, two receivers to either side. Takes a snap, and they're going to call this one dead before the start of the play. It looks like the far side receiver was off sides, and that will back. The DeQueen left was up five yards. Yeah, yeah, that's just one thing. Excuse me, Johnny. That's just, I think it's just, you, you get them in a position of doing something that they don't do on a daily basis. Yeah, that, you know, that's almost a bonehead play on their part because a receiver goes out and he gets the position of the the uh, sidelines judge, and then if he cannot find where he needs to go, he'll call the, call the penalty. Again, two receivers to either side. Irvin, wor- Irvin working out a shotgun. Third down and 14. Low snap. Fueled by Irvin. Has pressure. Now throws. Underneath passes. Tipped and incomplete. Wow. <laughs> he had Grady Allison all over him. Guys, you know that this is fourth down territory for the Queen Leopards. And if they cannot get this, it's going to be tough for them to come back for this ball game. Quarterback throws his helmet on the sidelines. And, and you're wondering what... Excuse me, another player on the sideline throws. Excuse me, wasn't the quarterback. Hey, it will be fourth down. And you've got to believe if you're a DeQueen Leopard, this is uh, pretty much a must have. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is a must first and ten pretty much, you know, to, keep, to have any chance at all. White in motion. To fake to White. Now looking to throw his urban over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Coverage. He tried to go to number 15, his favorite target, but 
I tell you what, out there, old Kevin Murdoch, he's like glue all over him. The nice thing, you know, the nice thing about Kevin Murdoch, guys, he is 11th grader, and as good as he is, he'll be back next year. Guys, that just shows you that that series of downs, <clears throat> the, the Queen team had some success, and then when things started going bad, they completely went in disarray because Malvern totally dominated the last three series or the last three plays and now Malvern's taking a timeout. Coach Fogelman's got them all ganged up around him and, and it looks like the Leopards are going to take their final timeout and uh, we'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Josh. It's up, Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for my Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings, an 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Back at the Queen, where the Leopards hold a 35-13 lead, here with 9.32 to go in the ball game. they've got the football. Trent, uh, no, we got legal participation. Legal participation is going to be the call against the Leopards. Had too many men in the huddle, and that's <coughs> rather odd coming out of a timeout. Trent Block is the new tailback, number 43, and Trent has really done a good good job filling in. Sophomore that uh, was outstanding, like we talked earlier, uh, as a Cub, and he's really coming along as, as, as he'll get more, as he get a little older and more experience. He's yeah, he was handy. He was actually hurt before the season started. Yes. Got in late this year and has been able to contribute. Or excuse me, I'm thinking of Bedford. I did not block. Well, Bedford, and he is out there as well. He comes to play out to the near side alongside uh, Trent Bryant. Trailer steps under center, turns, give up the middle. Good game there up to about the 34-yard line. Get back... About four of the five, they lost on the penalty. Guys, I mean, the, the key here in the, <clears throat> towards the end of this football game, I know it's nine minutes and counting, but uh, they have to move the chains at least two times here. That's what I was thinking, John. <clears throat> to knock down this clock and, and not give the DeQueen Leopards an, uh, an opportunity to have it with any time left. Yeah, we get a couple of first and tens, and it's, it's going to make it really tough. Second down, about 12 to go for the first. Again, block on the carry. He's met at the line of scrimmage, and we'll get maybe a yard on the play. And that will bring up third down for Malvern. Yeah, and Malvern's, Malvern's <clears throat> thoughts process right now is do not stop the clock. So you know that you're probably not going to be throwing the football, but you've got to have an opportunity and some kind of play that comes up to to move the move the chains. And, and uh, we've got to... to March off more than a minute off this clock and, and not allow uh, DeQueen any opportunities. 8.20 to go in the game. This trailer and the Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. Trailer, swing pass near side, incomplete, intended for Marcel Bedford at the 35 and gets through Bedford's hands and that will bring up fourth down. Also stops the clock. Yeah, that's what you don't want to do. You want to make a high percentage throw and get it out there to him and let him have an opportunity to catch it. And it <clears throat> even if he didn't make the first down, the clock would still roll, and that's not what happened. Yeah. And, and now we, we've stopped the clock at 8.13, and we're going to turn the ball over to <clears throat> the um, the Queen Leopards. Buchanan in the pond for a mile, and deep man for the Queen sets up at the 35-yard line. Buchanan gets the punt away, short punt. Bounds at about the 47-yard line, takes a leopard roll down to the 43, and that's where DeQueen will take over the first and 10. Well, the Malvern defense is just going to have to stay <clears throat> stay strong. They've, they've kept the uh, DeQueen Leopards in check, maybe 20, 30 yards total offense in the second half. <clears throat> and uh, now uh, they cannot, they can bend, but don't break. The, the key is to, to allow that clock to continue to stop. Tackle them inbounds, don't run them out of bounds, and uh, allow that clock to just keep rolling. Irvin comes to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to his left. Well, that's got to be motion, and it is. <laughs> Finally, that one's called. You, you couldn't help that one. The, the, the uh, fullback got what? The two-second head start? Yeah, you already... 
Yordy Morgan, the fullback, uh, the big fullback, the 5'11", 220-pounder, uh, he, he took off, and uh, I think he might have go, was going to get the ball. He, he was excited about doing something. I don't know. He knew that he was going to. So he, he had, he had his, his number been called for something, either for a key block or, or he's going to get the ball. He had to take advantage when he can get it against number eight and 52 that's going to meet him in the hole. Five yard penalty is first and 15. Give up the middle to the big fullback, and he'll get most of that yardage back. As he'll bring up second down and 10 for the Queen inside eight minutes to go in the game. That'll that'll keep the clock moving. I'll allow him to to <clears throat> to run that four yards up the up the gut, but that gives us 25 seconds. And uh, they're calling the still calling the plays from the sideline. And uh, quite honestly, guys don't seem to be in any big hurry. Yeah, it's uh, seven and a half minutes to go in the game now. Leopards lead by 22 points. Again, two receivers to the near side. Now they hustle the line of scrimmage. Next about two seconds, let go. Irvin drives straight back, back, has some pressure. Swing pass near side, complete to White. White is going to be run out of bounds. Wait on the spot. Looks like they'll spot him just past mid. Well, wait midfield. Minute. They started to move the chains. <laughs> <laughs> it's at midfield right now. And it's about two yards shy of the first. It'll be third down and two for DeQueen. We'll call it maybe three yards. Clock's at 7.09, and again it's stopped since he ran out of bounds. Myers' defense just got a hold. Keep him in bounds. <clears throat> the clock would stop momentarily if they get a first down. Irwin up under center. Brings Morgan in motion. Swing pass, near side. Now they're looking for the flea flicker. flicker. James Key's going to pick this one off. With a 35, 40-yard line and out of bounds, the Lepers will have the football. Okay, I'm not trying to be cold, cruel, and mean, but, but it, once again, Johnny, you force them into doing something that they're not really doing, and, and 14 just, I mean 15, the outstanding wide receiver just forced a ball that shouldn't have been thrown. Yeah, guys, it, it <clears throat> it's... It, you've got them. You've got them really down. And and when when you are forcing them into something they're uncomfortable doing, uh, they've got them out of their own game plan. And Malvin's got them beat. Seven minutes to go. Malvin has the ball first and ten at the own forty-one yard line. Bedford goes split to the far side. Two receivers to the near side. Trailer up under center, and that is Black again at tailback. Trailer takes a snap, gives to Block up the middle. And he'll get about a yard on the play, bring up second down and nine. More, import, more importantly, the clock continues to roll. Yeah, the Leopard, like, like Johnny said a while ago, and, and this is another series, golly, a, a first and ten, one first and ten is, is, is huge. Two first and ten is, is, is almost a kiss of death. And the DeQueen crowd starting to file out of the stadium. They're afraid they know exactly where they're going to be driving next Friday night. <laughs> they're getting started on the road. <laughs> Map quest <to> go <laughs> now. Trailer takes a snap, gives to block on a delay. He'll pick up, again, about a yard. And that will bring up third down and about eight for the Leopards. Guys, you know, <clears throat> time management now is what uh, Coach Fogelman is trying to do and giving some other guys some opportunities to – <clears throat> to get in the football game, yeah. get some experience. But the thing is, Malvern's got to try to get this first down, and they'll put it in the books. Under six minutes to go now. Leopards leading, 35-13. Trailer now working out of shotgun. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Blocking the backfield as well. Swing pass, near side, looking for Bedford, and Bedford not able to come up with it. Well, and that'll stop the clock at 5.43. Guys, and it... <clears throat> I, <laughs> you know, the thing about it, it's, you, you've got to give them credit because we're putting some young men in there under fire, and the best way to get really the speed of a ball game and the speed of a game is to get out, get out there against a real good DeQueen team. And uh, the last two series has, has not been real successful, but uh, oh, we haven't been playing our A players either. Still scored in five of nine possessions tonight. Buchanan gets to the kick away. Line drive kick towards the sideline goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. And the Leopards of the Queen will take over first and 10. 5.37 to go. 
Well, it's just, well, just a swap of uh, processions in uh, less than three minutes, about a double swap here, and, and uh, Malvern just got to <clears throat> keep it in bounds. Well, what once was a fast-moving ball game has, has really drastically slowed down. It's uh, uh, it's amazing how the diff the tale of two two well actually it's the, this last quarter's what's really slowed down. Irvin takes a snap, gives to Morgan coming to the near side, looking for running room, cuts up field at the 35, and he's going to be upended at about the 38-yard line. Pick up of seven, maybe six yards on the play. Guys, this this is where. This type of uh, possession, or that, that play that uh, they just ran, is exactly what they should have been doing this whole quarter. Instead, like Ron mentioned before, they started doing fleet flickers and trying to throw it down the football field and trying to get scores really quick. When they were behind seven points, that's what they should have been doing. Instead, Malvern just took them out of their own offense. Yeah, up the middle. Nothing doing there as the Malvern defense gangs up to uh, combine for about a two-yard loss. Good job, Quante Walker coming up and making the stop right in the hole. A loss in the play of about three, excuse me, not three, right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Wow. I mean, third down and five. You have to give you kind of idea how the ball game has turned. On the sideline with his helmet off is Greg White, the, uh, the big all-state running back. I formation for DeQueen. Irvin trying to get to the outside. He's going backwards. And the Leopards will drop him for a loss. Yeah, just no room. No room for him to run. And Mowler's defense is just swarming him. And you can tell who's winning and who's losing by the attitudes on the football field. Yeah, it's uh, 407, 405, four minutes left in this one. And uh, thank goodness we're not going to Gauls Nell unless <laughs> lightning strikes out here, guys. We got, uh, we'll bring the, we'll be, the Leopards will be at home. And uh, who'd you say we'd be facing, Johnny? We'll be playing McGee. McGee from down yeah. eastern, southeastern side. They'll be coming over to Malvern in, uh, next week at 7.30. 3.42 as Irvin gets the punt away. Angles away from the sideline. It's a very short punt and goes <laughs> out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Guys, that was about an 11-yard net punt. Yeah. You know, it's one of those such situations, you know, and, and I want, you know, we've been there, and this is really an out, really a good, good foot, football team for DeQueen, but, you know, <laughs> when, you get, when you get away from things, doing things you normally do, and you get behind, uh, it gets a little sloppy. I, I, I do not understand this spot whatsoever. And the ball went out of bounds at the 45, 45. and he marks it at the 50. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can get a better shot at it with Steve Laverne. He'll be in here and correct right. us if we're wrong. It'll no, be. that ball went out about the 47. Four, I'm telling you. Four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you watch the replay of this great Leopard ball game here. Oh, busted play, and the Leopards are going to lose about five yards. He just chucked the ball back there. Well, Bryson Barnes got stepped on as he took the snap. Got stepped on by one of his offensive linemen, flipped it back to his running back, and he had no chance whatsoever. A lot of, a lot of new faces out there, a lot of clean jerseys out there for the Malvin Leopards. And for the, uh, there's a lot of clean jerseys out there for the, uh, the Leopards from uh, DeQueen Tooth. Three minutes left in this one, and uh, we're just all, everybody just running the clock out, basically. Second 15 for Malvern. Bryston hands off to Trent Block. Block hurdles a man at midfield across the 45. He's got the first down. Still on his feet and is going to be wrestled down at the 37-yard line wow. of the queen. That wonderful good. play. Good second effort three or four times. It keeps his legs churning. And he had the momentum and just kept running over a young man from the queen. And uh, I believe that we both got the second team in of offense and second team defense both in. But good play by Block. You know, this ball game, this win is going to open some more eyes around the state because, quite honestly, everybody had picked the Queen to win this ball game. I didn't hear Johnny's and, and Michael's favorite guy, Barry Grooms, what he said, but I was going by the paper and some other things. Two receivers to either side. Brock gets to carry up the middle. He'll carry for about two yards to bring up second down and eight as we hit 2.20 to go. And more players that are uh, trying to get in this game, late in this ball game. 2.13 left on the clock, and Malvern has uh, continued to have possession of this football game well in hand, and uh, this is one of those 
<clears throat> games that if we've been passionate for and really want for years, yeah. you know. This is, guys, easily the most complete game uh, yeah. when you consider the quality of the opponent. Put, yeah. Three receivers to the right, or excuse me, to the left, one to the right for Barnes as he steps under center. He'll hand off the block up the middle. Block powers his way. He's still on his feet at the 20 yard line, trying to wrestle the ball away. Block holds on. Still barreling <laughs> down to the 10 yard line. <laughs> wow. Wow. Putting on a show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, the other kid is really looking good out there for, for our future is uh, Bryston Barnes. You know, he's a six foot, 168, 170 pound sophomore that uh, has played some quarterback and, and uh, he. He maybe gets a small opportunity to play some more quarterback, you know, as as the years go along because he's a good looking athlete out there. Barnes is getting the signals in from the sideline. Minute twenty four left in this one. I want to tell you something, guys. It's been nineteen ninety nineteen ninety six since the Leopards won seven ball games, and uh, Leopards are moving seven to three. Outstanding season for uh, these Leopards. Barnes takes, gives, block up the middle. This time block gets held up at about the eight-yard line. Pick up a couple on the play. It'll be second and goal. Guys, I think it's well in hand, and Malvern will probably take a knee and, <clears throat> and go home with a win here at 35-13. The thing we're going to have to, going to check on, James King seems to be okay because he came back and made some big plays there early in the third quarter after that uh, Dink on his. We, we're going to have to check on Dontell Henson. Uh, I we don't have glasses up, but I do believe I see him on the sideline over there standing up. So yeah, he's hobbling around. I can tell. Definitely a ankle. Barnes steps back and takes a knee, and that should do it. Twenty-two seconds to go in the ball game. And Malvin will not have to run another play unless the Queen calls timeout and a jubilant. Malvern sideline, along with getting a standing ovation from the visiting fans over there. And they were treated to a great one tonight by the Malvern Leopards. Yeah, if anybody ever doubted that Malvern Leopard football was back, they should have seen the way we played Nashville last week. Could have had a chance on that. Then come on the road, long road trip. These are road warriors. I would tell you something. I, I wouldn't have been afraid to take this bunch to Gauls Nail. It's going to be nice to be at home. But uh, this is as good a road football team as Malvern's had uh, since 96. 